Okay, everyone, this is Whitfield Harrington coming back with another video. This is part two um, on my teaching about angelic assistance. And I want to talk to you this time about how to identify angels in your dream. In the last video, I talked about a situation where I saw myself going back to my hometown and witnessing um, a scene across, literally across the street from my mother's grave. Um, and let me tell the story again for those who may not have heard it. Uh, I had finished praying one night and immediately after getting in bed, I had a vision where I saw myself being taken back to my hometown. And I was going across my hometown and, and out into the, the area where there are no lights. So it was pitch black dark. And I was being transported in the arms of an angel. I literally knew that. And I could see a strange fire coming out of the forest. And as we were traveling, maybe about 10 to 15 feet above the earth at a moderate speed, I could see that strange fire. And I, and I noticed that the location of it is you know, near my mom's grave. And then all of a sudden, the angel took off at warp speed. I mean, like a, a supersonic jet, Boom. pinned me to his back, pinned me back. And when we got close, you could hear those spirits seeing that that saw us in the forest start screaming. Ugh. They started coming out of the forest. Then all of a sudden, the angel elevated real quick, and he turned around and allowed me to look down into the forest. And I could see the strange fire was these spirits were standing around a grave doing something with the grave then all of a sudden I was taken back into my body and immediately when I entered into my body I was snatched out of my body again I mean violently snatched out of my body just and was taken down through the floor now I'm being held again and I'm trying to figure out is this a continuation of the first vision I'm just going to be silent am I about to be taken somewhere in hell and be shown something and it just didn't seem you know right and I finally asked, where are we going? And the spirit didn't say anything to me. And I asked, are you um, an angel of the most high? It didn't say anything. And I could hear it say, I got to say something. Then I started speaking in tongues. And it was like when I started speaking in tongues, I shocked the spirit. And it released me and brought me back into my body. Now, I want to break that down for you. Because I didn't do it in the last video. I want to break that down for you, what that actually means. Let me get me some, some air in here. This is what was happening. This was a very, 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 very deep ritual that was taking place. That I did not understand until I got the revelation the next day. If someone calls you in a building... It's like this building here beside me. And they said, we're Phil. And they're calling me through a door. And I respond, huh? And they said, come here. And I get up and I go through that door. I've entered into that door in response to that call. Okay. So basically they've called me out of my car into that building to see what's wrong. Very simple explanation. Well, let's take that to a sinister spiritual perspective. This was a ritual, a satanic ritual, where instead of calling you through a door, they call you through your grave. They dig a grave and they call you they call your spirit man up into that grave. And the same principle is, if you go into the building, you're now officially where? In the building. If you go into the grave, you're now officially in the grave. Now, I'm not going to go all the way into that. I'm just explaining to you that this, because that's probably a little bit too deep for you to comprehend, but this is my warfare cryptic. I have to figure this stuff out on the fly, what's going on. Um, 
That ritual was designed to kill me. The spirit that was there to carry out the assignment was there waiting at my bed for me. The strange thing was what the enemy didn't perceive is they didn't perceive that an angel was going to come and get me and show me what was happening before they started. So when I got back and they were performing the ritual, I was aware that this was not an angel that was taking me down in the earth. This is a demon pretending to be an angel taking me somewhere, going to show me something. So that's why I tell people, don't attempt to contact angels directly because Satan himself has transformed into an angel of light, which means he's the master of deception. So your discernment and your obedience unto the Lord has to be on point when you start recognizing that angels are working with you. Now, to some people, I'm a little paranoid. That's, that's cool. <laughs> and, and in a sense, there are things that you can't see that your angels and the Holy Spirit can see. And it may not make sense to you when you get ready to walk out the door and the Holy Spirit tell you, wait, pray, pray, pray. There's certain things that you just don't see coming. And an angel can see it coming. I, re I recall I was on my way to a barbershop one day here in Chicago. Pulled up, parked my car. Turned the key to get out. And the voice of the Lord spoke to me and said, wait. And it said, pray. Huh? I'm just getting, uh, do I need to stop going to this barbershop? Is what I'm starting to ask him. And he said, pray. I prayed for about one minute. And I stopped. And the spirit gave me the release. Opened up my door. Shut the door. Locked the door. Doom, 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 doom. The distance that I would have walked in that minute, it was a shootout right there at that spot. So sometimes angels can see what's about to happen before it's happening. They can see it days in advance in many cases. So you have to be sensitive to what looked like, you know, uh, what's wrong with you? You know, we're supposed to be going into the red. No, we're finna pray right here. You have to be sensitive to that. And that's just one of the situations that God spoke to me at that moment to keep me from being right in the middle of a shootout. Now, I, I have since stopped going to that barbershop, okay? <laughs> I don't go there anymore. Um, I've kind of got off subject here. Let me, let me get back on. Now, one of the ways that angels love to appear in dreams is they don't give their true appearance. And when I say true appearance, they don't come with the wings out, halo on, gold sandals, different things like that. And... One of the reasons why this is deep what you're about to hear is in the spirit realm, spirits can see one another. Therefore, angels have a tendency, this is going to sound a little strange to you, that when they come into the earth realm, they disguise themselves. So they blend in with the other spirits. They don't become extremely noticeable. Watch this. In the first video, when I talked about the two angels that were standing over me, one had his hand on this shoulder and the other had his hand on that shoulder. In my room, they had on white garments. But underneath those white garments, as God sits on the throne as my witness, they were wearing the uniforms of NFL referees. Now, I assume that this was during football season. And I could only imagine that the reason that they came with that appearance, so it wouldn't they wouldn't stick out when they entered into the spirit realm to come to you. Because recall, in the first video, Daniel has an angel that can't get through. <laughs> now, why did he have an angel that couldn't get through? But maybe because it was extremely noticeable that hey, that's an angel. Maybe we need to stop him. So over time, 
angels learn to disguise themselves when they come into the earth realm so that they can get to you quicker. But you have to know their characteristics when they show up in dreams and when they show up in visions because I'm positive you know um, a few 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 weeks ago I went to Houston and I'm positive something happened I took my prayer shawl with me to Houston and when I flew back um, and I got back to Chicago I'm standing there um, waiting on the carousel to bring the luggage out so I can go home all of a sudden I'm standing to the far right the first luggage comes up and is my luggage but my luggage has been open somebody has been in my I'm like oh my god and it comes off and I, I see it open everybody's like his luggage is open what is up with that and then all of a sudden as it comes around I get it off the carousel zip it up and out of nowhere this guy comes up to me with a baseball cap on, African American guy with a baseball cap on, and he has this training material that I've just come from, and underneath it was nicely tucked away my prayer shawl. <laughs> and he said, is this yours? I was like, yeah. And there was a, a, a gentleman standing beside me, watching me. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to put everything together and I wanted to know how did this, my prayer shawl, get outside of my bag or where did he get it from? And I turned around to look for the guy. He was nowhere to be found. The gentleman standing beside me, white guy standing beside me, he was like, where did he go? Disappeared. Out of sight. And it's interesting because the boy that brought it to me, he was an African-American. And most of the people that got off that plane were not African-Americans. So it was, should have been easy for us to spot him. But I perceived that something had been going on because I've noticed lately in my prayers, my prayer shawl has been showing up in my prayers. And I believe somebody tried to steal it while I was in flight. But the angel of the Lord stopped them from doing it. Because I have seen um, situations, and it's probably have to deal with this in another video. Well, I just deal with it now. Where when I prayed with my prayer shawl, the angel that came in response to my prayer was wearing a prayer shawl. I'm like, what? So I started understanding that, you know, there's a lot that was going on with the prayer shawl. And I knew that the enemy probably wanted me, uh, you know, to get rid of that prayer shawl for me. I'm sweating. Hold on. <laughs> um, now, one of the most common ways that angels will disguise themselves, and these are not really... They're, they're disguised in the dream but in the spirit realm they're not disguised demons know that these are angels the most common way that they appear respectfully in their duty is as a police officer when you see something in your dreams that has on the uniform of a police officer it is normally always an angel. And notice I always say normally. <laughs> because I always leave that little, you know, 0.99.9% because I know how the enemy is. Why do they appear as police officers? Well, what is a police officer? He is a law enforcement agent. So... Who is responsible for enforcing the law of God in the earth? Angels, under the, with the assistance of men and women of God. So angels will appear in your dreams as police officers. So when you start seeing yourself getting pulled over, and this distinctive, humble, but very prudent and direct, individual approaches you and says something to you sternly but with love it's probably an angel trying to give you a message and you need to slow down or you need to steer away from this you need to get away from that police officers are those specific angels in the dreams that demons don't play with 
you may find a few absolutely murderous, lawless, demonic spirits that they ain't bound to nobody. But the lower level of demonic spirits, they don't play with them. Because those spirits or those angels can arrest them in the spirit realm. They can be arrested in the spirit realm. You, sometimes you hear people praying and, and they arrest a spirit. An angel can arrest a spirit. And in the natural, it is the police officer that can arrest a person. And so when those um, spirits come around you and those police agents or those um, law enforcement angels show up, they go because they don't want to get arrested. And what will happen is, is what I'm learning now is what will happen is those spirits can get arrested and they will be held indefinitely in hell until the day of judgment. They don't want that. Think about that. The Bible speaks of, um, and the angels which catch not their first estate, them had he reserved in chains under darkness until the day of judgment. There is a holding ability for angels to, I mean, for demons to be locked up indefinitely until the day of judgment. And when those angels come to do it, they run. If the word comes out for them to be arrested, then they're arrested for, for violating the law of God. Now, this is this is a lot I'm trying to give to you and and, and, and I don't have notes. I'm just talking. Um, so let me bag up. We're dealing with identifying angels in the dream. And we're telling and I'm telling you about the police officer. Gotcha. So let me give you an example. One night, Jesus, I <laughs> I I don't want to tell the first part of it. Uh, uh, should I? Okay, no. Um, one night, I had a battle going on, a mysterious battle going on at my place. Um, some people astral projecting it, you know, it didn't work. As they always keep trying to do it. And I told y'all it ain't gonna work. They, they still keep trying to do it. It didn't work. Um, so what ended up happening was, get that out of my mouth. I woke up one morning and I went outside and I understood something had happened in a vision. I had anointed my house, all four corners of it. And some people attempted to astral project into my house. And unknowing to me, I didn't know this was going to happen. They got caught. One of them got trapped. Or as they say in their terms, they got locked out of their body. The spirit couldn't get back. And so I knew immediately what had happened in the vision when I saw the vision. The next morning, very next morning, when I walked outside to go for my little morning walk, I'm going to go to the corner store and, you know, get something. I don't know, maybe some uh, milk or something. I don't know. When I stepped down out of the building and looked at the corner at the street, um, light there is a flyer of a psychic telling people that you can call me and I will you know tell you your future you know what what the psychic say so it's a psychic flyer on the the light pole but there's a crystal ball <laughs> on the light pole on this flyer that's on the light pole and I mean it's it was taped up like somebody was going crazy. It had so much tape on it, they wanted to make sure that if you took this off, you was going to have to work like an idiot to get it off. Well, I'm like, okay. Interesting. So, follow me. I look at this one, and I make a left turn. I make a left turn and head towards the store. When I get right by the store, I notice that there is another flyer at the bus stop right before the store. And it's taped up like a madman on the glass with the crystal ball coming back out the other way. It's two. Then I walk past the bus stop, entering to the store. But before I enter into the store, I notice that the other street corner also has a flyer on it with a crystal ball on it. Ah, just three flyers with crystal balls after somebody got trapped in my neighborhood trying to astral project the other night in prayer. I go into the store, 
handle my business, come back out, pass the three crystal balls, make a right turn, get in my car, go down to the first corner that I can make a legal right turn. When I go down to the first corner to make a legal right turn, my, my antennas are up now. I look at this corner, I was like, okay, there's no crystal ball on this light pole on this corner. But when I turn to the last corner, four, it's four corners in a square, there's a crystal ball on that one. I said, okay, I already know what's happening. You picked the right man at the wrong time. Went on about my day. I already know what's about to happen. I know what's about to happen. What's happening is two things. Number one, they're trying to lock down the neighborhood with me in it. That's what it's called. And they've set the trap by putting three, one, two, three, you know, locks in place. And all they have to do now is put the fourth one in place once they find out who they're trying to lock down. So I start my day. Didn't think about it. Come home and I say, oh, that's right. We got to take care of that tonight. So immediately at 12 o'clock, oh, I'm ready. I already know. You have to start your little witchcraft rituals at 12 o'clock to get me, but I'm wide awake. I started praying at midnight. And I mean, I went in praying. <laughs> and about 15 minutes into the prayer, out behind my apartment, at the window, I can hear a cat going, Wow! I mean, just loud. And I'm saying, oh, you didn't got yourself into the wrong fight tonight. I didn't let up. I did not let up until I knew I had won that battle. And let me tell you how I knew I won that battle. All of a sudden, I had a vision that I saw three police cars on the scene. And I knew what that meant. That meant that the angels of God was on the scene and those spirits had been arrested. I shut the prayer down and went to sleep. That's how it works. You have to know how angels appear to you. They may appear to you differently in your country. They may appear to you differently in your region. But you have to know their characteristics and their nature. Number one, they're not pushy. Angels are not demons what, what pretend to be angels. And they, they'd be very nice. And then all of a sudden they get pushed and like, come on, you're moving too slow. You know, they, they do stuff like that to where they, they act like they're there for you. Then all of a sudden their true nature started oozing out of what they're doing. But angels are very humble. They make an appeal to you because the, there, there are certain laws in place and rules of engagement in place that you have to follow in order for them to interact with you. Um, another characteristic of angels, and I hope this is not too heavy for you and if you didn't watch the previous video you probably won't understand what I'm about to say nor appreciate what I'm about to say angels work in shifts okay they work in shifts when you see Jacob in the Old Testament the Bible speaks of him wrestling with a man to the breaking of day and when you dig down deep into the scripture you understand that he's wrestling with an angel well, he's wrestling with this angel to the break of day. And then all of a sudden, the angel looks up and sees the sun coming and it says, let me go. He's like, I won't let you go unless you, you bless me. He said, no, let me go for the, it's almost daytime. I got to go. It's saying that my shift is over. This is an angel that works the night shift and it had to report back to headquarters. The mysterious thing that I still to this day, I prayed this morning. I'm asking God now, God, you got to tell me what is up with this. And, and he just said, don't go into it right now. <laughs> but um, there's there's this, this changing of the shifts. When the sun come up, you need to be up. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> when the sun come up, you need to be up. Because I used to pray and ask God to let his angels watch over me while I was asleep. And, okay, I can tell this story. I was dealing with a situation when I really didn't understand astral war warfare where I was being harassed by people who were doing astral projections. I mean, seriously, just manhandled. And this one person would come through the wall of my bedroom 
and just had a field day with me. And so I had um, received the revelation that I needed to pray that God would assign his angels to watch over me while I was sleeping to turn back any arrow or any attack of the enemy during my sleep. So I prayed that prayer for the first time. And I mean, I prayed and went in hard. And when I got in the bed, immediately upon going to sleep, here comes this spirit. This spirit, it looks like an old woman or something. It came through the wall. And it attempted to take its hands, both of his hands, and place it on me in the bed. Right before it could touch me, out of nowhere, a force hit me that spirit so hard it was like somebody had a baseball bat it hit that person so hard that it knocked them right back through the through it was like a car hit them and they went back through the wall and i could feel the hit when they hit them it hit them so hard that it jolted me out of my sleep and i knew what had happened this individual had been hit <laughs> by the sword of an angel there was an angel that was standing there guarding. And when it saw that spirit come through the wall to harass me, it popped it so hard that it knocked it back through the wall. So I started praying more and more and more that God would allow his angels to watch over me while I sleep. You should do the same. But here's the catch. that man. Now, it took me years to figure out what I'm about to tell you. So I appreciate this, okay? The strangest thing kept happening. I would pray that God would let his angels watch over me and they would be there. I would notice it. I would be able to sleep in peace. Then I'd wake up, know that they're there, and go back to sleep. And immediately when I go back to sleep, I would get attacked. That made no sense to me. That went on for years. How is it, God, that I know your angel is here, but he would let somebody attack me? Okay, you ready for this revelation? Well, the angel had an assignment. <laughs> the angel assignment, this is what God told me after years. And when I finally asked, he says, the angel's assignment is what? To watch over you while you sleep. Okay. The moment your eyes pop open, that angel's assignment is over. He gone. His assignment was to watch over you while you sleep. Not why you woke. <laughs> That's why every time I prayed that prayer and an angel was assigned to watch over me while I sleep and I would wake up, the Spirit of the Lord would wake me up to pray and I'd go back to sleep, I'd get attacked. Because they've just seen this angel vacate the building. Now, here they come. Boom. Now, there were some other things that I could have done to prevent the attacks all alone which was fasting and praying and getting my, my, my spiritual life and my spiritual fire hot enough to where I can ward off an attack. But I'm telling you this so you would know in advance that if God assigns an angel to watch over you while you are asleep, that angel is assigned to watch over you while you are asleep. When your eyes come open, the angel is going to say, well, I'm just sitting here to watch you while you sleep. I can go now. You woke. So those are the things that I, I'm, I'm going to really start laying out is you have to know how the conditions are formed for angels to do certain things. Um, and you have to know when you get the revelation that what you've prayed about has happened or you need to continue praying about it. Or you need to know when the, the, the Lord is allowing angels to show you things. Because there are some things that... um. <laughs> I've been allowed to be you know, seen via you know, teleported by angels and different things. And Jesus, if I just start talking, I can make a video, an hour video every day probably for the next six months. <laughs> if I could recall all of, this, of the scenes, man, just, just so, so, so much. But the overall objective of this is God wants me to train his people now. How to utilize something that's available to you and that's what i'm going to start doing in the next video i'm going to start training you now how to position
position yourself to be able to request angelic assistance beyond just when you sleep, okay? Um, there are certain things, <clears throat> my God, that are going on in the world that the Lord has trained me, and I'm, I'm going to start talking now. God, that's heavy. It's trained me how to pray certain prayers. And the results of what I see, I pick up the newspaper and see the results of my prayers. And recently, um, um, what, what, not recently, a few years ago, one of the things that I did was I felt I didn't have enough angelic protection. How dare I insult God? Tell him I need more angels protecting me. <laughs> so I decided to ask. And I received confirmation that my angelic protection moved from one to three. I know that I have three guardian angels. I know that. I know when I go certain places, I know them when they start speaking. I've learned to distinguish the difference between the voice of God and I'm still learning to distinguish the voice between God and angels. But you have to develop, yes, the, the, the difference between the voice between angels and demons. Because demons, you know, they know how to formulate their they voice. I'm telling you, one, 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 two groups of demons know how to take their voice and intertwine them together and sound just like God. I'm going to tell you who they are. <laughs> they, they, these two demons are, what's their name? What's their name? Um, um, lust. <laughs> lust and, 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 and in, I don't even know the name of the spirit, but when people say that they in love, I don't even know what to call it. False love, lust, and 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 false marriage or something. I, I don't know what to name it. But when those two spirits start to sing, and they tell you to get married to anybody, <laughs> when lust start talking, it know how to change its voice to sound just like God. Child, that's your husband. Set me on, on that video. <laughs> when lust start talking, man, it say some stuff that if you ain't careful. You'd be misled. Listen to this. All right. I remember one day I was at home. Minding my own business. And a voice spoke to me and said, go open the door and look outside. And I'm like, why is God telling me to go open the door and look outside? It's kind of strange. I go to the door, open up the door, look outside. And across the street, upstairs, my neighbor, female, is standing in the window naked. I shut the door. And I said this to me. I said, Whitfield, whatever you do, you have got to learn to distinguish the difference between the voice of God and the voice of demons. Because that was not God that told you to open that door. And I'm telling you this. You have to develop one way to hear from God that you do not allow the enemy to manipulate the sound of his voice to where you think it's God talking to you and it's not. This is why you're seeing a rise of so many false prophets and different things in the land. Because a lot of times people think that these prophets are hearing from God. They're hearing from demons. And some of them think that they're hearing from demons because sometimes an angel of prophecy will come to deliver a word of prophecy to somebody. But if that person, that prophet is living in sin, unrepentant, and that angel gets held up in the heavens like the one that was coming for Daniel, all of a sudden a demon will come in and will pretend to be the angel and will start helping this person prophesy. And you trying to figure out how in the world is this joker doing all of this crooked, low down, dirty, no good, ain't nowhere near being saved stuff. But yet they can prophesy to a T. 
familiar spirits. That's how. They know they can, folks. They can call out all the evil stuff that they see going on around you because they in on it. The spirit that's speaking to them knows the agenda. Uh, and there's a, um, a video of a man by the name of Bishop Earthquake Kelly. Um, Bishop Earthquake Kelly was had a, a grandmother that was a voodoo priest. And I'm going to put his video down at the bottom um, of his testimony where he talked about his grandmother was a voodoo priest. But yes, she was an evangelist. And he would talk about how she would run revivals and, and would be prophesying to folks. And he was a little kid like, don't they know this woman is working voodoo? Church could, they couldn't discern it in the church. But yet she was telling folks what's in their house, what's going on in their house. And he said she was actually sending imps, demons to, the, to follow certain people after service. And they would come back and tell her what was in their house and what was going on. But because people did not have the discernment to recognize that this person was operating on a demonic anointing, they were being deceived. And my whole point to you is this, is that when you get to a level in God, where God starts sending angels to you, you have to be wise enough to know the difference between the voice of God and the voice of demons. And you have to know the word of God. You have to study the word of God. You have to pray and get in God's presence so much until you know his voice. I was invited to a church a few years ago here in Chicago. I went once and never went back. I told somebody that was a member of that church. I said, let me tell you something. You need to find you another church to go to. You need to pray about it. Well, why? 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 No, you just need to pray about it. Because if I, if I got to tell you what to see, you can't see. And you probably ain't going to see it after I tell you what I saw. Okay? There are things that you need to pray about. When God starts showing you, you know, sometimes an angel will come and get you and show you that this church, this is what's going on right here at the altar. Something going on right here, doing something. that take you there and start showing you these things. And you need to be in the presence of God so much from a person who was in the presence of God every day, an hour, two, three, four hours at a time. Then all of a sudden I walk into the church and you won't tell me that God is here. Not the God that I'm in his presence every day. He ain't in here. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. You sure about that? Because this is not what I know as the authentic presence of the Lord. And finally later on, God showed me the individual in the spirit realm. Let me tell y'all something. A lot of these ministries that pop up and become extremely big real fast. Some of them have made covenants with spirits from the waters. And now all of a sudden they want you to go down to the lake and have a Sunday morning service while the sun rises and while y'all stand up at the water. That's another subject for another day, okay? But I'm, I'm telling you, there's some stuff that's going on that your discernment need to really kick in. Jesus help me. The Bible says that the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. And I want to stay on track, stay on course. And I want to try to keep these videos not too long because yeah, for reasons that's, that's very important. But I want to stop right here. And I know you probably uh, wondering where is this going to go? I'm telling you, this is, this is going to get real, real real deep. I haven't even really started scratching the surface in this, but I want to show you how to identify angels in your dreams. It's my main point of this and telling you that you need to be able to discern the difference between the voice of God and the voice of demons that will come making you think that it's God speaking to you. So continue to watch this series and I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed as the Lord continue to give you the revelations that click on the links in the bottom of the video um, as far as listening to Bishop Earthquake Kelly's testimony. That's going to give you an insight even more into what the Lord had to open my eyes to deal with and, and how to fight because I used to, you know, fight stuff, still do fight stuff like he's talking about. And you need to know these things. So you would know how to prepare yourself for prayer. And please don't feel the need to panic. Okay? 
don't feel the need to panic when you're in battle with strange warfare. Just this morning, I had something strange to happen, you know. I don't want to tell all of it, but and I was like, okay, God, what's up with this? And the Lord said to me, why are you upset about what I'm revealing to you? You should be more concerned about what you don't know. It says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If I reveal something to you that's that that's that that makes you, you know, uh, uh, no, no, it's not that that I'm revealing to you that you should be uh, because now you know what to deal with. But it's the stuff that you don't know that's destroying you. So when God starts revealing you all these strange things, all this strange warfare. Don't panic. Stop tripping. Please. He's showing it to you so you can deal with it. And if, and if you were wise enough to watch this to the end, you're going to get a nugget that everybody else didn't get. That when, Lord, when God shows you something, at that moment, that is the best time to defeat it. The moment he reveals it to you, the Holy Spirit, the angels, everything is aligned. It's like, okay, we got this situation. What you want to do about it? If you get up and you start praying right then, right there, it would be dealt with immediately. But if you roll over, go back to sleep, think about it. Let me read some scriptures about it. Those spirits have went back and they've reinforced. So when the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, roll over, deal with it then. That's why when I put together the prayer series for the, um, the spirit spouses, I told you that when that spirit manifests and when the Holy Spirit shows you, go out. Boom. Put your targets on it. Don't stop it like a heat-seeking missile. Don't stop until you take it down. That's it. So I'm going to stop there. It's hot out here. All right? <laughs> and I don't want to drown out the sound with the AC in the car and the birds are chirping and all of that good stuff. So I will see you in the next video. God bless you until that time. Be blessed. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and like and share. You have a blessed day. All right. Bye-bye.